Hey guys, welcome back to Martin Chats. So today, we're going to be reviewing one of my favorite graphic novels. One that I think is seriously underrated and overlooked. Batman, Death of Innocence, The Horror of Landmines. This was the first Batman book I got that was written by Denny O'Neill. Which, if you don't know who that is, Denny O'Neill is the guy who basically saved Batman along with Neil Adams from the campy Adam West 60s era and basically gave Batman's balls back as the Dark Knight that we all know and love today. I have a lot of Batman books written by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams, but this one, as I said, was the first. And honestly, I feel like every Batman collector should have this book because it's a really good read. The artwork on this book is very exceptional. It's got a dark tone to it, which, you know, of course is Batman, right? But it's, uh, it's a really cold, dark tone. You see, back in 1996, comic books were used to raise awareness about the dangers of unexploded landmines and to warn children to steer clear of undetonated landmines. So, in this story, Batman goes to a foreign country called Kravia, or Kravia, K-R-A-V-I-A, to save a little eight-year-old girl who is missing. Her best friend and her father was killed by a landmine as they were driving on the road. And Bruce Wayne desperately wants to save this little girl because she's the same age as he was when he lost his parents. She still has a mom, but her best friend and her dad are dead, so he can relate to the dead parent thing, you know? And this book gets really dark from the start of page one. This is probably one of the most violent Batman books I've read. So the place that Batman is going to is filled with landmines. Some are buried in the ground, some are in plain sight, some are hidden, some are disguised as toys, and other, other things. So Bruce takes a bomb sniffing dog with him. And as soon as they land, they're not even on the ground for 15 minutes before something bad happens. Some asshole sniper shoots the dog and kills it, then gives Batman a chilling warning about the horror of his situation. Like what the hell bro, you kill his dog, then warn him about the area? It's crazy. This book has a lot of violence in it in such a cold gritty tone, but I like it. I like it a lot. There's no Joker or Two-Face. No Batmobile, you know, typical Batman stuff. It's really just about a man trying to do everything he can, risking his life, trying to save a little girl. We even get to see Batman use a gun, which is something we don't see very often. Now, he doesn't use it to kill anyone, he just uses it to blow some of the landmines up. Still, though, it's pretty cool. One of my favorite shots, though, is a panel of him walking out of an explosion. Which, I don't know why, but I think it's really badass anytime I see Batman in front of fire. That is so tight. Like, man, come on, you cannot tell me that isn't cool. Nobody else can pull that off like he can. Talk about a bat out of hell, right? Bruce goes through a lot to save this girl. There are a lot of terrorists he has to fight and a lot of bombs he has to avoid. The odds are really against him. But the really sad and messed up part about this book is he finds the little girl and saves her. He takes her all the way back to where it's safe and... Batman calls for a rescue team to pick them up and to take them back to Gotham, back to her mom. And Bruce is actually feeling really good about himself, that he completed his mission. But here's the sad part. Just as things are starting to get warm in this really cold, cold book, the little girl sees this shiny plastic thing that she thinks is a yo-yo. She picks it up and she dies. It was really a landmine disguised as a toy. Batman fails to save this girl. Like I said, this is probably one of the most 
WTF Batman stories I have ever read. After all that, even from the very beginning, su surviving the first landmine explosion, you know, that she was in with her dad and her best friend, the girl dies anyway. And now, Bruce has to live with this guilt. Just another thing to make him a bit more darker and a bit more broodier. At the time, when this book came out, some landmine activists had hoped that this Batman graphic novel could be used as ammunition in a campaign to encourage the Senate to sign a treaty banning landmines. But unfortunately, the proposed treaty failed to pass the Senate floor. Batman Death of Innocence is a very good book. Very educational, especially at that time when landmines were a big issue. Another thing I like about this book is that after the comic story ends, the next few stories are actual stories about real people and their experiences with the horror of landmines. So you get to read those too, which I like. It's a good way to reach kids and the overall juvenile generation. They also came out with a Superman story dealing with this same issue called Deadly Legacy. I myself haven't read it, I plan to, but I don't know. I feel like the Batman story would be better because Superman, you know how he is. He could just find all the landmines and blow them up with his bare hands. You know, he's faster than a speeding bullet. So he could just fly from Metropolis to, to Kravia, find the little girl, fly her back to her mom, then fly back to the foreign country, destroy all the landmines, and fly back to the Daily Planet and write a whole story over it before lunchtime. You know, everything's always happy-go-lucky with him. Batman is more realistic, you know. He can't see the danger around him. His life is on the line trying to save this girl. One wrong step and he's dead. He has to rely on his wits, his memory, and his will. That's all there is to it. And that's what makes it a great story. And that's what makes Batman a better character than Superman. Sir, 